Good evening and welcome to you all to the service of evening prayer on Sunday the 24th of May, which is the seventh Sunday of Easter and the Sunday after Ascension Day. I'd like to say thank you very much to everybody for your kind thoughts and words on this, my eighth anniversary of being the vicar at St Peter's. Um, yes, in case you are wondering, there will be cake um, and I hope you all have some cake in celebration as well. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To you be glory and praise for ever. Raised to your right hand on high, the ascended Christ shows the Prince of Love and bestows on us the gifts of grace. As your Spirit renews the face of the earth, May we bring forth the fruit of the Spirit and reveal your glory in all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm for this evening is Psalm 47. O oh, sing praises to God, sing praises. Clap your hands together, all you peoples. O oh, sing to God with shouts of joy, for the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is a great King over all the earth. He subdued the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He has chosen our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loves. God has gone up with a merry noise the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. O oh, sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God has taken his seat upon his holy throne. The nobles of the people are gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham. For the powers of the earth belong to God, and he is very highly exalted. O oh, sing praises to God, sing praises. As Christ was raised by your glory, O oh Father, so may we be raised to new life and rejoice to be called your children, both now and forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the second book of Samuel, chapter 23, verses 1 to 5. Now these are the last words of David, the oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the favourite of the strong one of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, one who rules over people justly, ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning gleaming from the rain on the grassy land. Is not my house like this with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? Here ends our first reading. A Song of God's Children The Spirit of the Father who raised Christ Jesus from the dead, who gives life to the people of God. 
Alleluia. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. All who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For we have received the spirit that enables us to cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness that we are children of God. And if God's children, then heirs of God. If heirs of God, then fellow heirs with Christ. Since we suffer with him now, that we may be glorified with him. These sufferings that we now endure are not worth comparing to the glory that shall be revealed. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Spirit of the Father, who raised Christ Jesus from the dead, gives life to the people of God. Alleluia. Our second reading is taken from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1. Verses 15 to 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus, and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you, as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his, at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Here ends our second reading. The Magnificat. How excellent is your name in all the world. You have set your glory above the heavens. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. How excellent is your name in all the world. You have set your glory above the heavens. Alleluia. So let us pray. As we gather together this evening, as we bring our prayers together, so we thank you, Lord, for this day, for all it has brought us, for conversation we've held with others, 
the times of prayer and worship we've been able to join in. We pray for our parishes, especially for St Peter's, for its people, parish and congregation. We pray, Lord, for your church throughout the world, the body of Christ here on earth, for the role that the church has played in these difficult and testing times. As we have been reminded so many times, our building is closed, but the church is not. The church is still working, drawing people together in prayer and worship, supporting others, making sure that people are contacted, helping with food larders and food banks. Across the whole of our country, the church has been working very hard to provide for the needs of those it serves. And so we pray for the Archbishops of Canterbury and York, for the central governance structures of the church, that they would have wisdom in their decision making and strive in all they do to enable and empower all people of faith. We pray for our own bishops, for Julian, Philip and Jill, for our archdeacons, Mark and David, and for all in those roles of leadership and authority. We pray for those who've had to change their plans, for those whose weddings have been postponed, for those whose baptisms have been postponed, for those whose funerals have taken place in a very different way to what many would have wanted. We give thanks and look forward to the time when we will be able to celebrate these events, when we will be able to remember those who have died, when we give thanks for those who have been born. We give thanks and look forward to the time when we will be able to be with our families and friends again, when we will be able to enjoy fellowship, We pray for courage in leadership. We pray for courage to take the right decisions, not the decisions based on pressure. To show good leadership and strong leadership at this time. We continue to pray for our key workers, for those on the front line in the battle against this coronavirus, those in our hospitals and in intensive care, those in our care homes, those out in the community, those in our GP surgeries and pharmacies, those of our emergency services, those working in pastoral care, for our funeral directors, for those working in shops and businesses and manufacturing, for those who will be preparing to open their businesses this week. Lord, we pray for them. We pray for strength. We pray for those going out to work and those working from home. We pray for those furloughed and those who've lost their employment. We continue to bring before you, Lord, those we know who are unwell at this time. For those in need of your healing touch. Those we name before you and those who are known to you alone. And so amongst the many that we carry in our hearts and minds today, we pray for Bridget, Ian, Paul, John, Charlie, Morris, Wendy, Lisa and Margaret. Be with them and those who care for them. We also pray for those who have died, those who have died this past day, for those we remember at this time, and for family and friends who mourn. Lord, we ask that you surround them with your love and your care, and bring them your comfort. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, 
but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ has gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for joining me for this service of evening prayer, either live or perhaps if you've watched it a little bit later on. It's been lovely as usual to have your company. Tomorrow, as it is a bank holiday, there will be no live streaming for morning and evening prayer. However, the link for this can be found on our Facebook page or alternatively, if you go to the Church of England website, you will be able to find the order of service for both morning and evening prayer for you to say at home yourselves. In the meantime, and until I see you on Tuesday, do stay safe, keep well, and I will um, keep you in my prayers as always. Do take care.